Hi, Philip. It's nice to see you. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Great to e-connect again, Jilin. Well, I'm, I'm a maritime arbitrator and attorney. I started my education, my legal education in the National University of Singapore, graduating in 89. I'm Malaysian. I've been in legal practice in Singapore and Malaysia for the past 30 years. Maritime matters because that's how nations trade with each other. We have a lot of international trade. And when you have international trade, you, the sea connects the people, the sea connects the traders, the sea brings cargo in and out. Maritime law is easily one of the oldest areas of law. We, we have maritime principles which are derived from the Grecian tradition, the Rhodian tradition, for example, the law of salvage, the law of general average. Uh, IMO regulations are engaged and employed all over the world. And it, it, we have a lot of similar concepts which are applied internationally. You have the concept of flag state, port state. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the laws of many countries, you'll find that the, the conventions of IMO are adopted in, in those countries. So, you know, maritime law is, is, is fascinating. Some, some of the problems are systemic, meaning if, if we look at ships, ships have identity, ships have registry. The receiving states, the port state, actually have no obligation except for humanitarian grounds to accept the crew, and, and that, that is a problem of the crew change. I know there is talk in the industry how to facilitate, and we, we have seen like some countries like Singapore uh, opening up to allow easier crew change. But the, the problem that arises actually belongs to the owner of the individual ships. In fact, the ship manager's role is also very important. Different companies have different procedures. So here, here, although the industry is trying to tackle the problem, the actual solution lies at the micro level, in, at the level of the ship owner, uh, the crew, where, where they are, which country they are from, as well as the ship manager. There, there was one case, Jilin, um, where my client, imported certain product from South Africa. There was a lockdown there and the ships had already arrived. It's not COVID itself that uh, caused the situation, but the disruption arising from COVID. When the ports locked down, the cargo could not be loaded. When, when you charter a ship, time starts ticking and you, you have a certain period called daytime to load. And beyond that, you are charged demarriage. And this demarriage could easily be from the normal 5,000 US per day for very large vessels up to 100,000 US dollars per day. My clients and I had to navigate and negotiate. And you, you will find that a lot of uh, seminars online on this issue of force milieu. And during the COVID uh, lockdowns, Factories are closed. The Steve Doring companies, they are not fully open. And you also have ports shutting down. So all these things come into play. I guess listening to problems that everyone has faced, um, may maybe this phrase comes into mind. In the end, only kindness matters. Well, coming from a lawyer, I mean, um, I, I think what, what it is, is uh, this period has taught us a lot of lessons and hopefully uh, we will learn and remember and it will help us grow.